Edgar Valdez Villarreal, also known as La Barbie, is a former Mexican-American drug lord and a high-ranking member of the disbanded Beltran Levia cartel. Imagine entering a life of crime as a kid and being charged with homicide at 19. This man went from popular high school athlete to Mexico's most brutal drug lord. How did a Texas high school star become one of the most wanted men in the hemisphere, accused of being behind some of the horrible epidemic of murders across the Mexican border? Edgar Valdez Villarreal was born in October 1973 in Laredo, Texas. He grew up in the United States with his parents and six siblings, a nice family and a normal childhood. He's um, a kid you would not expect, coming from a nice family and upper middle class, living the American dream. As a young man, Valdez was a popular sports player in high school. It was said that his alias, La Barbie, was given to him by high school soccer coach due to his fair skin, brown hair, and light-colored eyes, which bore resemblance to a Barbie or Ken doll. Edgar Valdez Villarreal embraced the name with confidence and turned it into a fearsome alias. Valdez began breaking the law at a young age. As a teen, he started dealing with and distributing small amounts of drugs, which progressed into smuggling tons of narcotics across the border. Valdez was first arrested at the age of 19 in Texas, where he was charged with criminally negligent homicide for running over a middle school counselor with his truck while speeding down a Laredo street. Yet, he was not indicted. Seeing that Edgar Valdez Villarreal didn't have the best track record, his father offered to pay for his college education as an investment in his future. Unfortunately, Valdez wasn't interested in attending a higher education and instead continued as a small-time marijuana distributor. In the early 2000s, Valdez managed to ship large amounts of drugs across multiple cities in the United States. Each of their shipments could escalate to 150 to 180 kilograms of narcotics. Edgar Valdez Villarreal was forced to flee Mexico after he and his subordinates were caught and charged with smuggling tons of narcotics across the border. Now, Edgar Valdez didn't sit back and enjoy the peaceful Mexican life or change his name and try to start afresh, as one would hope. While in Mexico, Valdez joined a gang called Los Negros and continued to be involved in the drug trafficking network. There's never a good outcome with a kid like this. Uh, he's either going to be killed or captured by the Mexican military or federal police inside of Mexico, or he's going to die in a hail of bullets by a cartel rival. Eventually, he came into contact with Arturo Beltran Levia, a notorious Mexican drug lord and a key figure in the Mexican drug trafficking organization known as the Beltran Levia Cartel. Arturo Beltran Levia was born on September 21, 1961 in Sinaloa, Mexico. He and his brothers founded the Beltran Levia Cartel, which branched off from the Sinaloa Cartel. The Sinaloa Cartel is considered one of the most powerful and violent organizations in the Republic of Mexico. The cartel is responsible for manufacturing, acquiring, importing, storing, and distributing enormous quantities of narcotics into the U.S. In 2008, Beltran Levia broke ties with the Sinaloa cartel to create the Arturo Beltran Levia Drug Trafficking Organization. Arturo Beltran Levia is said to be responsible for the increasing violence rate in Mexico. He was also described as one of the most violent members of the cartel, overseeing, managing, and organizing all of their operations. Arturo Beltran Levia is also credited with introducing Edgar Valdez Villarreal to the lieutenant role within the cartel, kickstarting his formal hitman career. So originally, he was with the Sinaloan cartel, where the Beltran Levas were working with the Sinaloan cartel at that point. Then, when the Beltran Levas broke away, he came with them, was one of their the leaders of a group of hitmen that they had called Los Negros. Uh, he's also known as being one of the most brutal men in this entire drug war, in a, in a drug war in which you know tens of thousands of people have been killed. Uh, he's accused of. of, of orchestrating the murders of, of hundreds of people through this this group, the Los Negros, that worked for the Beltran Levis. Now, of course, with his connections in the United States and charisma, Valdez rises through the ranks rapidly and becomes Arturo Beltran Levia's right-hand man and lieutenant. He was highly favored by his superiors, who gave him authority over the organization's activities. Valdez was the first American to earn such a reputable position within a major Mexican cartel. He knows both sides. He knows our ways of operating, so that, that he uses that for the for his advantage. Valdez trafficked narcotics from Mexico and other South American countries into the United States, smuggling them into the country using speedboats and airplanes, while also bribing law enforcement officers with endorsements from the Beltran Levia cartel. By 2003, both the United States and Mexico had warrants for Valdez's arrest. Well, that's not the end of the story. The rise to leadership in one of the most well-known Mexican cartels was remarkable. But in order to sustain his position, La Barbie had to do more. Valdez became a hitman and began to coordinate wars against his enemies. 
And that's how he, st he started building a name for himself. How many killings do you think he's responsible for? Under his command, hundreds. I don't even think that, that he knows how many people he had killed. Between 2005 and 2006, approximately 200 murders per year took place in Nueva Laredo as the Zetas and Los Negros engaged in turf wars. The city became a victim of the cartels' violence. According to the Drug Enforcement Agency, La Barbie was responsible for the bloody turf war over the Interstate 35 smuggling route into the United States. Interstate 35 extends from the United States and Mexican border at Laredo, Texas, and covers an expansive route into the country. Unknown to many, the I-35 is valuable territory to drug smuggling cartels and gangs that operate the drug trades. Traffickers would transport their goods through the interstate while hiding the substances in well-known spaces around the vehicle. The only way for law enforcement to detect any legal substance is by stopping and searching the vehicle. Let's talk a little about the Mexican drug trade and wars negatively impact Mexico and the United States. Now, the Tijuana cartel traditionally ran the drugs business in the city, but the Sinaloa cartel has moved into their turf and taken away some of the business. It means now that the city is at the center of a major and bloody turf war, making it one of the most dangerous cities in the country. The drug intensified violence and crimes in Mexico with cartels engaging in turf wars, kidnappings, homicides, and assassinations have had a devastating impact on the country, leading to thousands of deaths and disappearances. It creates corruption in Mexico's law enforcement system due to bribery and intimidation, comprising the nation's security and hindering efforts against drug traffickers. Then there are the economic consequences. Though drug cartels generate amazing profits, it also causes economic distortions. The existence of drug cartels and the violence associated with them can deter investment and disrupt legal economic activities. Lastly, there's social consequences. The drug trade contributes to breakdowns and disruptions throughout communities and families. Addictions and drug-related crimes have led to social disintegration and increased health problems. The United States is the biggest consumer of both legal and illegal drugs in the world. Now, the border between Tijuana and San Diego is one of the busiest crossing points. It's been at the center of trafficking for decades, and it's not just drugs but it's human smuggling as well. Across the border, the United States is also affected by the Mexican drug trade because the United States is a major market for illegal drugs. Narcotic trafficking contributes to the United States drug abuse and addiction problems. Then there's the question of border security concerns. The illegal importation of drugs between the border presents significant challenges for border security, triggering international relations between Mexico and the United States. The flow of trade causes the United States to pressure Mexico to combat drug cartels more effectively. The disputes over strategies and priorities have caused tensions between the two countries, and all these problems have yet to be resolved. Meanwhile, the Mexican drug trade and violent turf wars are still raging. Behind all the bloodshed and illegal operations, La Barbie had made quite an accomplishment for himself in the criminal world. Though being a drug lord makes his net worth a bit difficult to calculate, there's no doubt Edgar Valdez Villarreal lived a more than wealthy life for a few years. To the public, Valdez portrayed himself as a successful businessman. He's known to have worn expensive suits, driven fancy cars, surrounded by beautiful women, and possessed millions of dollars. Valdez was reported to have cases filed with Rolexes and diamond-studded Ademars Bouguets. It's more than fair to say Edgar Valdez Villarreal led a life of luxury and success. Some would say he led a life of a role model, a life that was picture perfect and worth looking up to. Some kids in Texas want to be just like him. Guys like money, they get fame, they get girls, they get houses, they get everything they want. Except it was anything but perfect because his fulfilling lifestyle was fueled by the drug empire. Being responsible for the Mexican drug epidemic, Valdez was also involved in other illegal activities, including money laundering, kidnapping, tortures, and murders. Besides La Barbie, he's also known as El Guerrero, the white guy, and El Camadante. The mention of any of these names would instill fear into many people's minds because Valdez wasn't a man of mercy and peace. Scott Stewart, the vice president of tactical intelligence at Stratfor, a risk analysis and geopolitics website and publisher, had stated, in the cartels, there are businessmen and then there are warriors. La Barbie was a warrior. Valdez allegedly taped videos of his brutal torturing and killing activities. In 2005, the Dallas Morning News obtained a particularly horrifying video that showed interrogation members of the Los Zeta gang who were tortured, beaten, and eventually shot. And against rival gang members, murder. 
Police say you can hear LaBarbie's voice interrogating these men just before they're executed. The Los Zeta gang is a Mexican criminal organization based in Nuevo Laredo, which is directly across the border from Laredo, Texas. The gang originated in the late 1990s when commandos of the Mexican army abandoned their ranks and started working as the enforcement arm of the Gulf Cartel. Los Zeta is one of the most dangerous drug cartels and was known to utilize shock and awe tactics, which means they are not hesitant to torture, kill, or behead other people. The gang is mostly involved in drug trafficking, but they also operate through protection rackets, assassinations, extortion, kidnappings, and other illegal activities. Last week, you had the worst massacre in this entire drug war, with 72 migrants killed by the Zetas, one of the drug cartels that, that operates primarily just below Laredo and Brownsville, Texas. They actually operate all over Mexico, but that's sort of their home base. Um, they're accused of, uh, of gunning down 72 migrants. That's ob obviously the worst massacre that's occurred in, in what's a, an incredibly bloody drug war here. Of course, the Los Zetas gang and Edgar Valdez Villarreal's cartel were involved in major territorial disputes that led to wars and bloodshed. Authorities have reason to believe that Valdez's motivation for attacking the Zetas was because they were responsible for the murder of his brother, Armando Valdez Villarreal. The fate of Edgar Valdez can't be considered a surprise because when a person is engaged in the criminal world, they aren't only putting themselves at risk, but their family as well. His brother was a casualty of his consequential actions. This may sound like a broken record, but the only outcome of being involved with the Mexican drug empire is either imprisonment or death. John Barbie isn't immune from the inevitable. By 2009, La Barbie was considered one of the most wanted drug lords in Mexico, with a $2.3 million bounty on his head. Edgar Valdez was more famous than certain celebrities, though not many would envy his status, with law enforcement on his tail and enemies from all sides of the country. Let's just say Valdez didn't get too many good nights sleep. But before Valdez had to worry about being arrested, there was a disruption regarding his authority in the Beltran Labia cartel, a power struggle that threatened his leadership position within the organization. Arturo Beltran Labia, the leader of the Beltran Labia cartel, was killed by the Mexican government in December 2009. His death created an infighting within the cartel between his brother, Hector Beltran Labia, and Edgar Valdez Villarreal. Their dispute over the cartel's authority became gruesome. La Barbie fought tirelessly for the leadership of the organization. By 2010, the cartel was broken up into factions. The portion was led by Valdez and Gerardo Alvarez Vasquez, while the rest was led by Hector Beltran Lebia and his lieutenant, Sergio Villarreal Barragan. The two leaders were restless with their tactics to overtake the Beltran Lebia cartel. In August 2010, police reported finding four bodies hanging from a bridge in Kionavaca with a message warning anyone who sides with Valdez will suffer a similar fate. This was the first of many casualties resulted from Edgar Valdez Villarreal and Hector Beltran Levia's power struggle. All of these conflicts and killings had captured the attention of the law enforcement. Many of Valdez's allies were murdered, and some former gang members decided to cooperate with law officers and became informants. Valdez had no choice but to retreat to Mexico City to maintain a low profile. Marched before the cameras this morning under heavy guard, Edgar Valdez Villarreal was a long way from his high school football days in Laredo, Texas. His coach had nicknamed him the Barbie for his green eyes and fair skin, and the moniker stuck. But now, at 37 years old, he stands accused as one of Mexico's top drug traffickers. The alleged kingpin was arrested yesterday outside Mexico City without incident. The day has come. On August 30th, 2010, Edgar Valdez Villarreal, La Barbie, was captured by Mexico's federal police outside of Mexico City. It was reported that Valdez barely struggled while being arrested. Maybe he knew this was a better fate than other drug lords who were shot or killed in the line of illegal work. It, it's very significant because obviously he can be important in terms of other investigations, in terms of digging into uh, the, the workings of these cartels. Yes, it's very important that, that they caught him alive. Uh, and the hope is that they will be able to get more information about the functioning of, of other cells, other parts of the Beltran label organization that had splintered after Arturo was, was, was gunned down by the Mexican Marines in December of 2009. 
On September 1, 2010, Mexico's federal police released footage of Valdez confessing to his interrogators how he smuggled drugs from Panama to the United States and transported money from the United States to Mexico in disguised vehicles. As a bonus, Valdez even told the interrogators that he spent $900,000 to make a film about his life. However, he decided not to release the movie because it would reveal too much information about his doings. Speaking of movies, it was revealed in 2016 that American actor Army Hammer managed to reach out to Law Barbie's family to secure the rights for a film about the life story of the cartel's leader. Unfortunately, by the way things are looking, this film might not be made or produced anytime soon. Not long after Edgar Valdez Villarreal was arrested, his father-in-law, Carlos Montemayor Gonzalez, took authority over the cartel, but his glory lasted shortly due to his arrest three months later. It's worth mentioning that Carlos Montemayor Gonzalez, though not as famous as his son-in-law, was also a big-time drug lord and a senior member of the Beltran Levia cartel. Not much is known about him, only that one of his daughters married Edgar, and that's the foundation of the relationship. It makes sense. When a person is engaged in all these illegal and violent activities, it's best to keep your family a secret. Well, he was facing charges in the U.S. for, for moving tons of cocaine into the eastern seaboard between 2004 and 2006. So there was a standing indictment for him in the United States for, for drug smuggling. So that would probably be the main charge, obviously, that, that, that he would face. And there, there is a, a desire here to move him out of Mexico so that he's not inside the prison system, not able to keep trying to, to gain power inside these cartels. On September 30th, 2015, Mexico extradited 13 criminals to the United States, including Edgar Valdez Villarreal and his father-in-law, Carlos Montemayor Gonzalez. In January 2016, La Barbie pleaded guilty to conspiring to import and distribute cocaine, which can be a sentence to a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of life in prison, as well as a maximum fine of $10 million, and conspiring to launder money, which can be sentenced up to 20 years in prison and a fine of up to $500,000, or twice the amount of funds laundered. In 2018, Edgar Valdez Villarreal was sentenced to 49 years and one month in prison, by U.S. District Judge William S. Duffy, Jr., followed by 10 years of supervised release and ordered to forfeit the sum of $192 million. U.S. Attorney John Horn stated, Valdez's conviction is a victory for the people in both the United States and Mexico whose lives were affected by his cocaine trafficking through drug addiction and community decay, or through the violence and corruption associated with the cartel's daily business. This capture of Valdez for Calderon is a chance to say, look, we are making progress. We're bringing down some of these top leaders and um, have faith in us. And even though it's getting more and more violent, if we push forward, we can succeed. The capturing and sentencing of Edgar Valdez Villarreal, or La Barbie, doesn't mean the end of the Mexican drug epidemic, but it does reassure people that a major drug lord was arrested, and the Mexico and United States governments are working towards a solution to the cartels and drug problem. The notorious drug lord Edgar Valdez Villarreal, aka La Barbie, is behind bars under maximum security. Everything seems to be over. Not quite. Another problem soon arises. A notorious drug lord known for decapitating his victims is seemingly missing from federal custody. Around November 2022, it was reported that Edgar Valdez somehow disappeared from the federal database, causing widespread confusion and panic because Valdez is not supposed to be released from prison until 2056. The idea that La Barbie was walking free caused a huge uproar in the United States and Mexico. After being pressed by the Mexican government to provide an explanation as to why Valdez is not listed in the Bureau of Prisons, the U.S. Bureau of Federal Prisons finally made an official statement to the public regarding the whereabouts of Edgar Valdez Villarreal. But look, he's not walking the streets of, of this country. He didn't escape. Could there be a, there'd be a bolo out to the entire national law enforcement agencies? Bolo means be on lookout for. There's, mm -hmm. there's none. So based on my experience, I've worked with BOP many times, he's been moved to a secure location. He's been moved out of the general population that has a lot of cartel members that and knows who he is. It is absolutely a relief to learn that La Barbie is not out walking the streets of our neighborhoods. But this raises the question of why he was transferred into protective custody. Could it be because he decided to become an informant on the side? Before Valdez's arrest, there were rumors that he leaked inside information to federal officers, which led to the death of Arturo Beltran Levia, his former leader. But these are all baseless speculations. As Tom Hallman, the former acting ICE director, said, So he, he's off, the, off, uh, off, uh, off on a secure location. I actually think, if I had a guess, educated guess at this, 
He's about ready to testify. Mm -hmm. and he's about ready to testify probably against other cartel leaders and Mexican officials. We all know the Sinaloa cartel has their hands in the pockets of Mexican officials, uh, uh, federal law enforcement. That was Mexico, my next question, Tom. the military. So, Tom, I just got to ask, what would be the incentive for him to cooperate? Is he going to be back on the streets, or is it for a shortened sentence? What, what would you say, just to speculate? I don't know. There, there, could be a lot, there could be a lot of things. They could take him around the general population and put him in a, uh, you know easier prison setting. But look, he, he's got over 30 years left. So maybe they maybe knock 10 years off his sentence and extradite him, you know, someplace else. But he's, he's a, he was born in the United States, so it isn't like they can deport him. But I'm sure he's working on some deal, or you know, maybe he found Jesus while he's in prison. I don't know. <laughs> some people, some people in Mexico are starting to panic about what's going to happen in the next week or two. So with that being said, it's not unreasonable to assume that Valdez has testified to confidential information, therefore needing to be protected. Rest assured, he isn't released from federal prison yet though it does feel like the chain of events keep unfolding and there's no ending to this story. It's highly unlikely that La Barbie found Jesus or a sense of remorse while serving his sentence. The long-lasting effect of turf wars and the narcotics epidemic provoked by this drug lord is unforgivable. By punishing and locking him away for life, civilians, especially those affected by addictions, violence, and cartel brutality, can begin the healing process. On the other hand, Edgar Valdez Villarreal's family has suffered from loss and fear as well. It's important to highlight their family's tragedy. In Laredo, I paid a visit to Labarbi's family. His sister is a law student, his brother a businessman. His mother describes him as un buen hombre, a good man. But she admits she hasn't seen him in a very long time. What is your thoughts on Edgar Valdez Villarreal's transformation from high school star to the most wanted man in North America? Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications.